happens to you, don't waste your time. Here's why. Because I'm happy. I'm alone if you feel like a room without a roof. Because I'm happy. I'm alone if you feel like happiness is the truth. Because I'm happy. I'm alone if you know what happiness is to you. Because I'm happy. I'm alone if you feel like that's what you want to do. speed things up any bit at all. I'm going to ask you to speak into the mouthpiece very clearly. Check this out. night it's june 26th hard to believe it's that <laughs> almost july wow this year's rocking and by fast um i want a special thanks to our sponsors out there well hey welcome to straight talk with matt hazley uh welcome special thanks to our sponsors out there eat24.com have you log or eat yet well log on to eat24.com download that app for your favorite mobile device Click order and eat. It's like a food truck in your pants. It's that easy. I got two earplugs in here. Drive me nuts. Um, also, Savino Wine Preservation Glassware. It's so easy to use. You can enjoy that wine with confidence knowing you get the full flavor of Tuesday's wine on Saturday or Friday, like tonight. Um, also, creative-mktg.com for ideas that work. Need a lasting impression for an ex-family or business function? Check them out at creative-mktg.com. Over 700,000 products. Uh, a lot of stuff going on in the news. It's been going crazy. Uh, people, if you haven't realized on the uh, New York prison update, it says apparently Richard Matt, one of the two New York escape prisoners, was shot and killed by law enforcement officers Friday today in a heavily wooded area in the northwest part of the state. Uh, it says police are closing in on his accomplice. accomplice. Um, apparently, uh, one source had told the news that they had, uh, officers had surrounded a fairly small area where they believed David Sweat is hiding. However, Governor Andrew Cuomo told late, night press conference. There is nothing to confirm where Sweat is at this time. It says State Police Superintendent Joseph D'Amico told reporters the first clue to Matt's locale came when the driver towing a camper thought he heard shots fired at the vehicle. When he managed to pull off the road about eight miles away, he discovered a bullet hole in the camper and called police. Also responding to what they believed to be the scene of the shooting, in her cabin, smelled gunpowder. Uh, it says a tactical team was immediately deployed into the 
nearby woods. Uh, D'Amico said that the team encountered Matt there and told him to put his hands up, and he was shot when he didn't comply. He also said a 20 gauge shotgun was recovered from Matt's body, um, but that Matt had fired no shots in the encounter. Yeah. Come on, Joe. I got uh, Night Talk, the legend, Star Maker Joe Rocks, messaging me because uh, he wants to give me crap. He could uh, call into the show at any time if he wants to hang out. And we could shoot the, shoot the shit instead of shooting tanks because that's what he's asking me to do. But um, talking about the New York prisoner escape update. Said uh, he also said a 20 gauge shotgun was recovered from Matt's body, but he fired no shots in the encounter. One source told um, apparently Fox News Matt was shot and killed by Customs Border Protection agents from the Department of Homeland Security. It says Cormer said there was no reason to believe, not to believe that Sweat was with Matt, but there was no confirmation of it either. He described the pair as dangerous, dangerous men. Oh, heck yeah, they've all, they've, you know, both in prison for murder. So, I'll tell you what, a lot of people are going to sleep easier when they get these guys in custody. Um, what, <laughs> it really shocked me that uh, it says Matt was serving 25 years to life for the killing and dismembering his former boss. Nice guy. Just the guy you want to do is take home to meet mom, you know. But uh, that's the type of guy that, you know, how do you give him 25 years of life? Because at 25 years of life, it means he's getting, he does at least 25 years. He, he could have been paroled at some time. How do you let a guy like that even out? Um, a guy that kills somebody and dismembers them, that's not a fit of passion where he freaks out and stabs a guy to death or or it's a bar fight and the guy you know he beats the guy to death because he's so losing it that's a guy that actually thought out what he was going to do you know and then to go and dismember him and then you're going to do I mean he, he would have had a chance at parole why I have no idea you know our prison system you know, they put guys away f three strikes for stealing a piece of pizza, the third strike, and they'll do life in prison, you know, for petty theft, three-time loser. But the guy that kills somebody, they'll let him out. That absolutely makes no sense at all. Um, uh, if you'd like to do his interactive with the show, you can do so by Facebook or Twitter, at Arm Radio 1, or just hashtag a tweet. Arm Radio, see it pop up on the tweet deck. Or if you're on my Facebook, send me a Facebook message. Uh, you see if I can get that open too. I got multiple screens open. I got two laptops and a and a desktop going here with four four screens. So let's see here. Let's get my Facebook going. Um, but you know to think that. A civilian worker at the prison has been charged with helping the killers flee, giving them hacksaw blades, chisels, and other tools. The guy had 27 years. He's three years from retirement. I'm like, what are you doing? Are you that stupid that you would give up everything that you work for to be charged? It says, um, the one said Joyce Mitchell... Prison tailor shop instructor who got close to the men, real close, I guess. Apparently, uh, they were giving her the old hiney ho or something like that, whatever. But um, I guess she backed out. She was supposed to be the getaway car driver um, because she felt guilty for participating. Well, oh, well, you're going to feel real guilty now. Um, she was in uh, June 15th to charges, including felony promoting prison contraband. Um, which has got to be, it's got to be a federal charge, I would bet. Authorities said the men had filled their beds with, uh, in their adjacent cells with clothes to make it appear they were 
sleeping when guards made overnight rounds. A custom steam, a cut steam pipe. The prisoners left a taunting note containing a crude character of Asian face and the words saying, have a nice day. So you're looking at these guys. They, they got out. There's no way they got out on their own. They had somebody help them. Well, so they went, worked their way out, and uh, now these idiots who helped them are pretty much screwed. I mean, wh what are you going to get for... Um, I don't know what they thought they were going to get. I don't know if they thought they were going to get... Uh, what were they supposed to get out of it? I bet you they... I would bet the defense for those people, I bet it comes that uh, you'll hear that the guy made threats to their family if they didn't help him. You're going to see something like that. When somebody does that, makes threats to your family, you need to do is let authorities know. So they didn't. I don't think so. I think there was um, more to it than that. They became bef befriended him. But to try to help a guy escape, you, you think they're not going to catch you? Come on. So this last guy, Sweat, he's still on the run. I mean, you, you wonder when it's going to happen. Sooner or later, they're going to catch him. It's, uh, I just hope that nobody gets shot and killed in the process. You know, because this guy, he's got nothing to lose. So uh, I, I consider them a high high risk that they have, are um, armed. Apparently, they said that they uh, had uh, broke into these cabins, and there were weapons left in the cabins. Why would you, you know, if you got a cabin that you that you frequent, why would you leave the weapons there? You know, I mean, I I don't understand that unless you got a Huge safe that's bolted to the floor, but why would you leave your weapons there? So, that's it. Um, the guy that, the Gene Palmer, uh, the correction officer that was charged with promoting prison contraband, tampering with physical evidence, and official misconduct, official said he gave the two prisoners the frozen hamburger meat uh, Joyce Mitchell had used to hide the tools she smuggled to sweat. And Matt Palmer's attorney said he had no knowledge that the meat contained hacksaw blades, a bit, and a screwdriver. Yeah. Okay, sure. You might not have... I, I just don't understand how they got past... Okay, so you get through the piping. But how do you get through the wall and the Constantina wire and, you know, whatever... Alarms that they have. They've got to have some kind of alarms that somebody's going over the fence. You know, I mean, on a maximum security pr prison, they have to have something there. Um, I just I just can't believe that all that can get, all that can happen in, in, in together, and no nobody notices that. So, well, I guarantee you, Whoever is left at that as a prison guard at that place, they are up their kahuni with a microscope. They are looking up the, these guys, and I guarantee you, you better not have been doing something stupid because they are going to find out. They will... Uh, the policies will be updated, and they will make sure that uh, they're followed to the letter from now. Yeah, it's probably got a little miserable at that, you know, for and not just for um, inmates, but for the officers there too. So, in other news, uh, we'll probably we'll give you updates. I got the TV going. We'll give you updates on if there's uh, anything with the the inmate sweat if they find him. It just says. Uh, Right now, it's still the only one they've caught right now. Well, he's dead. He was shot and killed, uh, Richard Matt. But it says police are pu pursuing fugitive David Sweat, so they're still looking for him. Uh, any updates I get, I will do as I'll pass them on. 
Uh, in other news, uh, Supreme Court, it said, uh, made two big rulings in the, within the last two days. Um, yesterday's ruling, they ruled that Obamacare, um, that it would, uh, that they upheld Obamacare. See, they had originally thought that Obamacare, they were, um, Republicans were, had thought that the word, the subsidies in it, the word state with a capital S meant that they could not give subsidies the state had to. And when the state didn't set up their own exchanges, the government went ahead and gave out subsidies and they ruled, they argued, the Republicans, that the government did not have the authority to do that. Well, if I actually understand why the um, Supreme Court ruled the way it did, and it ruled in favor that it was afraid that if they did rule against Obamacare, that so many people would be harmed by losing their subsidy. But I've always thought, and I've always been told, that what is if you look at um, what's a symbol for the judicial system? It's supposed to be a scale, and it's supposed to be um, the it's supposed to be it's a uh, oh, what is it? I think I want to say it's got a a blind over its eyes, so it's justice is supposed to be blind. It's not supposed to make decisions based on politics. It's supposed to make decisions based on what what the words were, and not what it might have meant. Um, sometimes it can be um, frustrating. Sometimes it might rule in your favor, but it is based on the Constitution and based on what the actual words mean. Well, a lot of people are upset because they feel that the this ruling, that the Supreme Court changed the verbiage to include the U.S. government when it was intentionally written to make the states open their, open their exchanges. Yes, I understand why they made the ruling because they didn't want to set so many people in, but I think people are still going to be paying through the kazoo for health care. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I, it, it, do I see more people with insurance? Um, I, I'm not positive I, if I do or not. I know, I know some friends of mine that are without it because of it. You gotta like that. Where's my? You gotta hand me just one. My son just walked up and check this out. Chocolate chip cookies delivery. Oh, you gotta love that. Thank you. I bought them so. But no, if you look at you know that ruling, I can understand the ruling they made. But the very next day, which is today. They came out with a landmark ruling that the, and I'm going to read it to you. It's, it says, court is not a legislature. This is Justice Roberts. Rips gay marriage ruling day after he backed Obamacare. So I, he was the one that was the very instrumental in Obamacare passing. And then he comes out the next day and he rips gay marriage. I honestly do not care one way or another who marries who. If you want to get married in any state, I think that's fine. I think if you want to, if you want to marry your, you know, your, if you're a guy, you want to marry a guy, that's fine. You want a girl, you want to marry a girl, that's fine. Whatever, great. Is 
what I'm worried worried about is, and I don't want to see it become is, where they, you see them with the, the cake place where they, the, the government says you have to make them a cake. Okay, well, when it says that a Catholic church has to do is marry two gals or two guys, what's going to happen there? Is there going to be any fight over that? I know the churches are going to fight like crazy. It's, uh, I just think it's a, a decision that now what's the next thing that's going to happen? Um, are we, uh, Are we opening up a can of worms? Possibly. Do we... Uh, does it change any of the, of the... Will it change the ruling? No. I, no, I don't think so. But I think we're going to do is down the road, it's going to be more problematic for for the, the churches and stuff like that. If you... Uh, I had a conversation today. I'll get into that later. That we talked about the we're going to talk about the flag, uh, the Confederate flag. Uh, I, I don't have any problem with taking it down from the capitals, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain that down the road uh, when we get into at, and maybe in the next segment. But uh, yeah, you you look at where are we headed? Where are we headed as a nation? Um. Are we going to with allowing gay marriage with uh, able to do is I, I didn't want to get into that subject yet, but as I said, I don't care if anybody gets marries them, you know each other. The only thing I worry about is when they start telling churches that they have to marry somebody. If it's against their religion, I guarantee you, they're not going to go to uh, a Muslim mosque that's here in the United States and force them to marry two gay people at the mosque. It will not happen. I don't see anybody going and protesting in front of the mosque. If they, if, if that is against your religion, fine. Um, but we talked about this last week. They're letting people join the ROTC program with, uh, what do they call it? The, you know, the, they have the beard and the, the headdress on, and they're not making them take it off. I, I just, I think if you want to be in the military, you have to conform to the military standards. If I wanted to be in the military, I couldn't have said, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Jewish or whatever, which, I, you know, I'm not, but I would say I'm Jewish and wear a yarmulke and not take it off. They would have said, no, put your hat on. So... I mean, it's, it's, I'm afraid that we're getting to that standard where we will put up with some, but then we don't put up with the others. It's not an equal system, what it's getting to. A lot of people go, oh, you're getting too, you know, you're getting upset about too many things, or you don't, oh, you're worried about things that mean nothing. Um, well, if somebody doesn't worry about it, 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 eventually it'll come out, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, why didn't somebody tell us about this when it was, uh, <laughs> you know, when they were talking about it. Well, they did, but no, you don't want to listen. A lot of people just sit there and if it doesn't affect them directly, ah, I don't need to, I don't need to hear about it. Uh, but uh, talking in other news, we had um, um, in baseball news, I don't know if you happen to see that. First time I've seen it. 
I've always seen it where, okay, a bad call goes and the player charges the umpire or charges the mound or char- whatever. But yesterday, during the Cubs, the umpire charged the mound to to go off on the on uh, John Lester who was pitching for the Cubs. I'm like, I've never seen that before where an umpire it says um, this is what the, the story goes. It said John Lester walked a batter in the fourth inning of Thursday's game between Chicago and uh, Los Angeles Dodgers. As Lester turned back uh, to home plate um, Andy Fletcher charged the mound, screaming at the pitcher. Fletcher got so heated, Cubs catcher David Ross needed to stand in in his way before the Chicago manager Joe Madden intervened. What exactly did Lester say? They got Fletcher so incensed. It says, he goes, I didn't say anything directed to him, Lester said. I don't know why he was so upset. I had my head down. I was yelling. He went AWOL. He goes, I don't know what's going on. It had nothing to do with the umpire strike zone. So for unknown reasons, an umpire charged a player through a temper tantrum that required a manager and a catcher to calm him down. Uh, culminating in no one getting thrown out and everyone confused. That right there, I, I, I used to laugh. I had uh, one kid who worked for me. He he um, he used to tell me, "Oh, I got a you know I got my third strike move." I'm like, "What the heck's a third strike move?" You know, an umpire is supposed to do is, you're either out, you're safe, or you know, or they have to go to the camera, you know, or whatever the video to check it out. There's no fancy go into some ninja move, you know, to call third strike, you know, you're out or to throw a guy out at first or whatever, but they do, they get involved in the game, which you're not supposed to be. It's like my son plays basketball for high school. The absolute worst, worst officiating call I've ever seen. Never heard of it. The, the referee during the basketball game, Set, blows his whistle and he says basket good and he makes the motion for the basket good and he says and three seconds in the lane I was like what <laughs> how could you have basket good and three seconds in the lane you can't have both if the basket's good three seconds means nothing if three seconds in the lane the basket can't be good I was like we were the whole crowd was like what we couldn't understand it, so, um, and I don't like to yell too much at games because I, 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 you know, it just doesn't do any good. But it was so this guy was so bad that there was a guy sitting down in front of me, probably about five six rows, and he was yelling at the official the whole game, and he was right on. And so <laughs> the official made another bad call. I said, "Why don't you give your whistle to this guy down here because he seems like he knows what he's doing." And everybody laughed. <laughs> I mean, you get people that that uh, want to become umpires and stuff. I mean, the officials in Major League Baseball, they're supposed to, I mean, they go through testing. They go, they, you know, it's a job. I mean, they, they go from park to park. Yes, it's a thankless job. Nobody likes the, the umpires. And, I mean, they all act like they, they're buddy-buddy with them. You know, because they got to make calls for them. They rotate between the plate and stuff. Um, one of the guys he used to play at the golf course, his son is a major league man, or a baseball, or, sorry, umpire. And uh, uh, Eric Cooper. So, I mean, he used to play, at, and I'd talk to him a lot about, the you know, what they, you know, the major league umpires do. And, and I mean, it's got to be, it's a tough job. You know, the, the only thing I never understood about being a whole plate umpire, and I'd like to, I'll, I'll maybe someday if I get a chance, I'll interview him. But, um, you know, you make calls for an outside call that's, uh, let's say if you're looking over the right shoulder of a catcher and you're making calls 
for low left on the plate that you can't even see. I mean, your best guess. And, and, and if an umpire is consistent between both teams, hey, that's great. That's all you want. I mean, he's not going to be perfect, of course. But, um, I mean, it it's kind of like in, in tennis where they finally started uh, allowing the computer to read ins and outs. And, that, and I think that's great because I would rather see the call be right than to go, oh, they, they say, you know, people say, well, you know, that's the way the game was meant to be played. No, the, the game was played that way because they didn't have the opportunity to check stuff. They didn't have cameras. They didn't have all they have now. They didn't have technology. It's like the, we talked about the U.S. Open course last week. Uh, what is that? Oh, I can't even think of the name anymore. It was, of course, I, I couldn't believe how bad it looked. I mean, you know, everybody can say, yeah, look, it, great golf course, but golf's evolved from the home of golf, St. Andrews. You know, I mean, yeah, it'd be neat to go play. It'd be kind of cool to go play at once. But, I mean, you, the United States, it's totally different what you expect for golf to be. If we, If golf would not be as popular... If they had to play it like they do over in Europe, um, and I'm not saying anything bad against them, but I mean, we—if you had six foot deep pot bunkers that people had to climb in and out of—I think you would lose a lot of uh, uh, excitement in the game. And plus, the fact is, everybody—I mean, I don't say everybody. But there's a lot of people that ride over here, and I mean, we'd have a cart stuck in the bottom of a bunker, you know, probably end up killing somebody by it. But yeah, you you know you you see, everything has evolved from then. Baseball's evolved, football's evolved, um, and golf's evolved. I mean, all your sports evolve. They um, baseball is is I I don't know what you do to make it more exciting with more scoring. But I mean, it's like soccer or which they call football. How do you make that more exciting? I mean, it's yeah, it can be exciting at times, but um, I wouldn't say it was exciting for uh, the one guy. They were talking about him on the news today, and I, I tried to find the article. I couldn't find it. But they said the one guy stuck his finger up the other guy's ass. I'm like, how would you find that exciting? I mean, that guy needs to be out, gone. You know, I've heard about, um, what do they call them, the... Uh, the Water polo guys, they do the same thing to other, where they'll like uh, rack each other, and you know, and I mean, it's pretty nasty under the water. What they, what you don't see, I, I'm like, I, I don't know how you could, how you could play that sport if somebody did that. I'd be done. I'd be like, right, that's it. Time to get out of the water. <laughs> you win. I have a, a story of a. A friend of mine, I won't name any names. He was uh, he was nuts. He was hilarious. Well, they all went trip golf trip, and they got down there and and they were all in the locker room changing whatever. And the one guy kept mooning the other guy, and he goes, "You moon me one more time." He goes, "I'm sticking my finger up your ass." And the guy's like, "Yeah, yeah, right." So he mooned him, and the guy stuck his index finger all the way up to his all the way up to his knuckle. And they walked over to another buddy and wiped under the guy's nose. <laughs> and the guy went screaming into, you know, running over to wash his face. <laughs> and the guy yells from the bath, the toilet. He goes, and I won't say his name. He goes, you need to get your fingers trimmed. He goes, my ass is bleeding. I'm just like, how do you do stuff like that? You run into people that you just. Uh, you should just drive you crazy. You know, you wonder how they how they function. But uh, yeah, that guy's nuts. I know him. And uh, it's one of those stories where you wouldn't believe it, but I've heard I've heard it from uh, several different people that were there, and they were like, "Yeah, it really happened." So, well, it's time for a quick break. We're a little over time. Um, once again, this is your host, Matt Hazley. Street Talk, and you're listening on Armed Radio Global. 
Armed Radio Global presents its new 2015 Talk at Night lineup. Mondays 8 p.m. Eastern, spot on with Lino and Tom. Straight Talk with Matt Hazley. Mondays and Fridays 10 p.m. Eastern. On Tuesdays, Talk Sign with Val. 8 p.m. Eastern, followed by High Five at 10 p.m. Eastern with Johnny and Mikey. Wednesdays on the air with Mike Allen. 10 p.m. EST and Thursdays Night Talk with Joe Rocks. 10 p.m. Eastern. Join the talk now on Ustream TV. TV. Replays on Spreaker, exclusively on Armed Radio Global. You're listening to Armed Radio Global. No boring playlists here. Playing the hits and the ones you missed from the 70s, 80s and 90s with a few surprises and our new Talk at Night shows. So join the talk at 1-866-225-5401 or Twitter us now on Ustream TV Armed Radio Global. Is your wife wicked hot or is she just cold? Do you just want to take a hot shower? Call Savino Mechanical for all your heating, hot water, and cooling needs. Savino Mechanical has been servicing greater Boston and southern New Hampshire for over a quarter century. Quality 24-hour service, reasonable rates, satisfaction guaranteed, licensed and insured. And remember, at Savino Mechanical, we are not comfortable until you are. Call Savino Mechanical today at 1-855-624-4280. That's 1-855-624-4280. Savino Mechanical. Attention world of tank gamers. Armed and its affiliated divisions are recruiting entire clans and tankers. Armed, the largest and most progressive gaming community on the world of tanks gaming platform. Now on three servers. To join, visit www.armedtanks.net or hashtag need a toaster. Toast that, bitches. We're back. We uh, last night was the I don't know, I don't know. It's another one of those like uh, they call it millionaire nights or whatever. Where the you know you get the uh, the NBA draft occurred. Um, I just you know I don't I, I got to talk too much about it. But I, uh, the first top four picks, Tim Worth. Uh, signed Carl Anthony Towns from Kentucky, seven foot, two fifty pound center. Lakers got D'Angelo Russell. Seventy Sixers went for uh, Jalil Okafor, and uh, the Knicks signed Kristaps Porzingis. He's a power forward, seven foot, two twenty from Spain. So, um, but no, talking about, it was kind of funny, is uh, the Lakers, <laughs> they, uh, it says uh, Larry Nance Jr. was selected by the Lakers 27th overall Thursday night, and he was a former Wyoming star, was quickly called out for a tweet he sent in May of 2012. 
Uh, Larry Nance Jr. It says, it says, G. I sure hope Kobe can keep his hands to himself in Denver this time. Hashtag rapist. <laughs> so, uh, apparently it says, Brian was arrested on charges of sexual conduct or sexual assault related to an incident in Eagle, Colorado in 2003. The case was dropped when Brian's accuser refused to testify in court. Um, it says, one people started to share the tweet. Nance quickly deleted it. Um, so there will still be some awkwardness by the first time they meet. Also, in uh, other um, other kind of tweet news, as you want to call it, it says uh, Bobby Portis was uh, signed by the or uh, drafted by the Bulls, and uh, apparently, it says. Uh, they say what goes on the internet never really comes down or something like that. And if you're a famous NBA player or soon to be, certain tweets will live on through screenshots that get passed around until the end of time. In case you missed it, the new Bulls power forward Bobby Portis, who drafted by the team Thursday, 27 pick regretfully drove into the wrath of Chicago fans over a few tweets he sent when he was 16. But more accurately, he drove into wrath of those passionately disliked the Miami Heat. In a few now deleted but salvaged tweets from 2011, Portis ripped on Chicago's most prized possession. It says, uh, it says, them Bulls fans kind of quiet now. And then another tweet, oh, he, in the same tweet, he said, where did all those so-called Derrick Rose ha or slash Chicago Bulls fans come from? SMH. And it says, another tweet he did was Paul Gasol, not as good as everybody thinks, slash say, and then one more tweet he did was, Portis most likely got wind. Oh, it says Portis most likely got one of his tweets circulating, and quickly issued an apology. He was smart, and he clever, cleverly, cleverly whipped out the rookie card. It says Bulls Nation, sorry for the tweets I sent four years ago. I was a boy then and a man now, and a bull. It says D Rose, Powell. What kind of donuts y'all like? <laughs> so, so, um, sometimes, you know, you make something, you make a statement like that on Twitter and it comes back to bite you. Um, it, because, you know, if you plan on being, um, yeah, but I guess at 16, he probably didn't really think about becoming a, a NBA star at that time. But, you know, to make a statement, you know, and then then you have to do is eat your words and go play with with them. But the one I thought was kind of funny is the guy got drafted by Cleveland. You know, you think, oh my God, you know, I just got drafted. I'm going to play with LeBron, and they immediately traded him to Minnesota Timberwolves. <laughs> it was like, you know, what a slap in the face. Yeah, I mean, not not anything against Minnesota, but I mean, I tell you what, LeBron's one of the greatest guys in the game right now. I had to I had to laugh. You know, you're talking about NBA. Phil Jackson, being former Bulls coach and, and Laker coach, he talked about LeBron in the finals. And he said the biggest problem LeBron has, he travels too much. And I'm like, I've been trying to tell my dad that for years. And he says, oh, that's part of the game. That's the game. I'm like, not like this. I'm sorry, but it's not a freaking triple jump. You know, I mean, I just, it drives me nuts to see a guy jump up, land, jump again, land, and then lay up the basket. And I'm like, you know, it's not a freaking pogo stick. So, yeah, it, it it gets irritating to watch, especially when you, you go watch college and you go uh, you go watch, you know, high school basketball and, and they're, they have to adhere to standards that they don't have to in the NBA. I'm like, and they go, well, they're bigger, faster, stronger. Well, th then they ought to be able to keep from traveling. You know, although God, I tell you what, that last playoffs, that was nasty. How how the heck guys don't get injured, knocked out every game? I have no idea. They they really beat under the boards. You know, you think about oh, I play basketball. It's not as dangerous as as uh, football or or if you want to play a sport that's not as dangerous. You know, not as much injuries. Play baseball, but anybody. If they could tweet me, 
Hashtag a tweet. Hashtag an arm radio. Let me know your opinions of what you thought about the guy making the catch with the baby in his hand. Guy can't hold the baby, drinking a bottle, and he makes a one-handed catch out into the field and robs. It ends up being an out. It was during one of the uh, one of the Cubs games. A great catch. Yeah, i got to give him credit. It was a great catch. But if anybody makes a catch that doesn't have a baby in their hand, they'd have thrown them out of the game. They'd have kicked you out of the ballpark. Inter- fan interference. The guy, I, my thing is, is, I don't have any problem with somebody reaching over grabbing a ball. It's natural instinct. They blame Bartman at the Cub game for why they didn't win the World Series that year. Well, Bartman had nothing to do with why they didn't win the World Series that year. They had two of the best pitchers going on, and they couldn't win. So, I mean, it was just actually three. They had Kerry Wood, Zambrano, and, um, oh, God, what was it, uh, Mark Pryor. They couldn't win one game out of, you know, out of the three, you know, or two that they had left. All they had to do was win, get one game. So, but, no, talking about is a guy reaches over into the field of play, he gets kicked out. I have no problem with the guy reaching over. My problem is, what do you got a baby that's six, seven months old at a baseball game anyway? I mean, it's so hard to protect that kid if a ball comes and gets hit off a, a rocket foul ball off the bat. You're not, I mean, if he's not paying attention and that kid gets hit, that it's going to kill a kid like that. That you know, I'm surprised with all the bat injuries that they've had, where the bat's breaking and flying into the stands, that they haven't made that net go all the way down the side. And I think it eventually will, because somebody's going to end up suing and it's going to end up making changes. But we don't allow kids under eight years old to be on the golf course. How do you bring a seven-month-old into the stands? And they're like, well, you know, they're they're coming to watch a baseball game. Well, a seven-month-old is not going to watch a baseball game. A seven-month-old has no clue what baseball is. You know, I just sit there and I saw this little kid. I'm like, I, I don't understand why you bring a baby t- to a sporting event like that. You know, it makes it makes no sense to me why they let them in. I mean, I think they're they're bringing themselves. Um, opening themselves up for lawsuits. They've had kids that they had a 14 year old kid. What just what last year or something like that, get killed by a foul ball. I mean, it happens. Hell, the one lady got hit by a bat. She almost died. They said she had life threatening injuries. And I mean, they're an adult. If you got a little kid, little kid can't defend himself. Um, no, I just I just think it's it's not a bright a bright move to bring young kids like that. You know, you you can argue with me whether you think it's right or wrong. Uh, you know, what do you th- what are your opinions? Let me know. Hashtag a tweet arm radio. I'll see it pop up on the tweet deck. And if you don't have Twitter, you can do so on Facebook at arm radio one. So, and if you don't, and if you're too lazy to send me a tweet, well, then screw you. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's a, I guarantee you, if that kid would be hit by a baseball, they would have said, they would have blamed the ballpark. They'd have been all over them. Or, if that kid where the fan would have went for the ball and it would have bounced off his hand and hit that kid, then they'd be all over ripping that dad why he went for that ball. Why did he try to catch that ball? I mean, if you saw the catch the guy made running into the crowd and he dove in and laid this guy out who was in the crowd to make the catch, if he would have dove into the crowd to get the ball and not seen that baby and hit that baby flying in he's two probably 
220 pounds, 210 pounds, very good chance of killing a kid and not knowing it. I mean, it, that's what, it's so dangerous. Um, you know, that they, they've had little kids take them to the range and get hit. Um, I mean, I've been hit by kids swinging, you know, at the, at the driving range. You know, practice, you know, they go swing back. You tell them, don't swing, don't swing. And what do they do? They swing. You know, the second you stop telling them, don't swing, they swing. So, you know, I mean, it, it's it's very easy to get injured. Um, and to take them to a game with the ball moving that speed it is, you're going to have accents. Call me a prude, whatever, I don't care. You know, I mean, it's just, I, I think it's just, makes no sense to take a kid that age to a baseball game you know the the kid can't enjoy it you know and if it's only there because they the parents couldn't find anybody to babysit for him so they drug him out we had people bring a car seat to the golf course and they asked if they could put it in between them on the cart and we're like no they got to be eight and they're like I've had people flat lie to you where you come in with a kid that's like four or five years old. You know he's not eight. Oh, he's eight. Just because they, it's their weekend, they have to watch him, and they don't want to have to sit there and stay and drop. The dad doesn't want to have to drop what he's doing to spend time with his kid. So he's going to make the kid spend time with him. Yeah, it's... uh. You know, it, it's a shame that we've got to that society that we, you know, the kid becomes um, a nuisance where, eh, okay, all right, I'll take him to the ball game, you know. You know, the most kids, yeah, they want to go there for about 10 seconds until they realize it's a baseball game. And if they don't have anything that's around there that keeps them occupied, like the, here, the, here they got a great ballpark. It was war, uh, um, awarded the best minor league ballpark in in the you know in the minors. It's got um, a Ferris wheel, a zip line, um, all kinds of different things they got down there. I guess they're putting in. Uh, I don't know if it's a, a little spray park or water park down there. They have one down there, and then they also putting in. Uh, like uh, bumper cars and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's really cool. They, they've done a lot with uh, this ballpark here. Oh, it says, okay. All right, Joe, thanks, buddy. <laughs> I keep getting messages from uh, Joe. I uh, left it open. I got like five messages there. And... Uh, Joe, anytime you want to come in the channel and you want to do is share some wisdom or just call me. You know what? I want to do is see if if you guys would like to do is call in. Um, and just uh, call into the show at 1-866-225-5401 and let me forward my phones just to make sure. And uh, there we go. Phones are forwarded. So we want to take phone calls. We can do that. Joe, you want to call in? Just ha um, you probably know you probably know the number. We'll uh, love to hear from you. Rather than sending me all these, uh, I don't have premium crap. Oh wait a minute! It is nine ten fifty four your time. So it's you're probably in bed. You're probably sleeping. She probably said, "Get over here, get to bed." It's awful late for you. It's uh, but no talking about uh, talking about taking your kid to the the baseball game. I can see if your kid's a little older, but taking them at you know you know four, five, six years old, maybe. But you start taking your kid that's at seven months. No, that doesn't make a lot of sense. 
you know, if you got multiple kids, okay, I can understand you're, got, you know, you taking one of the older kids to the game and the younger kids having to tag along. But yeah, it just, you know, you go into a, a, a baseball, football, basketball game, it's just awful loud. And the, the chance of them getting injured. Well, at a basketball game, you don't have too many chances of that, but you got it at baseball and, and probably not football. But, no, you don't get... I mean, it's, unless you're down in the end zones, you're not getting any... And most of the time, people aren't throwing footballs into the... They got the nets now, so... I got tired of chasing the football for a half hour while everybody threw it around. But, no... With the with the draft ticking last night, I didn't watch too much of it. I just wanted to see how my uh, my bulls did. I'm uh, looking at right now. Let's see here, who'd they pick? I should need need to do is go through my full draft board there. Oh, that was round one. I want to see round two. There we go. Because the bulls did get a pick and. Let's see here. Round two. I don't even think they get a pick in round two. Nope. They probably made a trade or something. Get get rid of it. But uh, apparently they're going to sign uh, Jimmy Butler to a long-term contract. That's what I heard today. So I was a little excited about that. So, uh, you know, it's... Uh, How the money in basketball just amazes me is, you know, baseball doesn't have a, what you would call a cap. So they end up paying back to the other, you know, the other teams for where they go over their luxury cap. So just a, it's just amazing the money in baseball. So I'm, uh, oh, here's one. Uh, Jimmy Fallon ho hospitalized. Apparently, uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon apparently had hand surgery. He uh, had minor hand surgery Friday morning after injuring his hand at his Manhattan apartment. Uh, tonight show is expected to make a full recovery. Uh, tonight's statement has been canceled due to Jimmy's injuring his hand. It says, if you had tickets to tonight's show, we'll contact you or schedule your tickets. Well, that would stink if you... Uh, you know, or from out of town or something and going to see him. I'm sure they'll take care of you. I, uh, what I do is take another quick break. Once again, this is Matt Hazel, your host of Street Talk. And you're listening to Armed Radio Global. Armed Radio Global presents its new 2015 Talk at Night lineup. Mondays, 8 p.m. Eastern, spot on with Lino and Tom. Straight Talk with Matt Hazley. Mondays and Fridays, 10 p.m. Eastern. On Tuesdays, Talk Sign with Val, 8 p.m. Eastern, followed by High Five at 10 p.m. Eastern with Johnny and Mikey. Wednesdays on the air with Mike Allen, 10 p.m. EST, and Thursdays, Night Talk with Joe Rocks, 10 p.m. Eastern. Join the talk now on Ustream TV. TV. Replays on Spreaker, exclusively on Armed Radio Global. You're listening to Armed Radio Global. No boring playlists here. Playing the hits and the ones you missed from the 70s, 80s and 90s with a few surprises and our new Talk at Night shows. So join the talk at 1-866-225-5401 or Twitter us now on Ustream TV Armed Radio Global. 
Is your wife wicked hot? Or is she just cold? Do you just want to take a hot shower? Call Savino Mechanical for all your heating, hot water, and cooling needs. Savino Mechanical has been servicing greater Boston and southern New Hampshire for over a quarter century. Quality 24-hour service, reasonable rates, satisfaction guaranteed, licensed and insured. And remember, at Savino Mechanical, we are not comfortable until you are. Call Savino Mechanical today at 1-855-624-4280. That's 1-855-624-4280. Savino Mechanical. Attention world of tank gamers. Armed and its affiliated divisions are recruiting entire clans and tankers. Armed, the largest and most progressive gaming community on the world of tanks gaming platform. Now on three servers. To join, visit www.armedtanks.net or hashtag need a toaster. Toast that, bitches. Back on Street Talk. Uh, we're going to do a switch a little gears there. We're getting away from the NBA and uh, talking a little bit about um, the Confederate flag uh, coming down down south. The Confederate flag that was flying over the Capitol was uh, a battle flag. I understand that. It was a battle flag for the South. When they fought the Union. And they fought the Union because they wanted to do is, they didn't want to take over and, and make slavery go over everywhere. They wanted to do is keep their, their states the way they had it, They're as slave states. Well, Lincoln said no can't have that and fought against it and they um, went to war well they uh, I have no problem with the flag the you know the confederate flag coming off the capitol what I my problem is is when they start they had a game uh, one of these um Apple, iTunes. You know, all these different companies start piling on, like uh, Walmart and Target and uh, Kmart and eBay and all this, saying that they're not going to sell anything with the Confederate flag, flag, re, flag related. Um, and I, ha- I have a problem with that because they're the, not for them to, whether they choose whatever they want to sell, that's fine. But when they chose to, to remove a game that was supposed to be um, historically correct uh, battles where they had the, you know, I mean, they recreated everything. They had the water, the trees, everything, the land like it was back then. And the battles went on, and it was a game. And one of the uh, armies was the Confederate Army. You can't change history for something that's like that is considered, um, my personal opinion, it's it's like you're changing, uh, like Gone with the Wind. They want to get rid of Gone with the Wind. Uh, you know, I'm a, I wasn't a big fan of the movie. It doesn't make any difference to me, but it was historical significance. Same way with the game... With the battles, recreating them. Uh, they weren't created, the game wasn't created, as uh, in honor of the KKK. But the KKK... Knock my earphone out. The KKK... My paper fell off the desk here. Um, took that symbol for their their organization 
I can understand them re wanting to remove um, the symbol for it having a um, oh, I guess it would be a, an unpopular taste or or an unpopular uh, feeling of that you know that that it, it, it's never going to change you know being over the capital like that well do you honestly think that removing the flag if somebody's racist is going to stop them from being racist no do you think that race relations in the United States has improved I don't think so. I think they've. It, it's almost to what they were. I would bet back in the seventies. I think they've gotten worse. And the reason why I say I think they've gotten worse is, I'm re, I'm reading an article and I watched a video on it. Um, there's a video of, and I actually live, they had him. Where. He is. Says the new Black Panther leader, whose uh, party at one point offered ten thousand dollar reward for George Zimmerman, dead or alive, uh, before Zimmerman was acquitted of all charges and Trayvon Martin's death, and it is now he's trying to get violence against slave masters in connection with the murders of nine people at a church in Charleston, South Carolina. He, and people go, well, you know, you know, they're the, the slave masters. Well, he's talking about way back in the, in the slave days when he, one he was trying to do is continue on with um, Vesey's plan, which was unsuccessful. He was a um, was for a slave revolt. Shabazz suggested Vesey wanted to take blacks to the uh, to Haiti. It says reports that in 1822, rebellion was the plan to seize Charleston's arsenal and guardhouses, kill the governor, set the fire to the city, and kill every white man they saw, according to PBS. It says, but but this is, he goes, and if you, you can look it up, you can read the article, you can watch the video, you can actually see him say it verbatim. He says, we need some Vessies, which is the uh, slave that was trying to uh, take charge to kill white people at the time. We need some Vessies of today. So, And then, at the, then you see him at the end of the video going, "Black power, black power, black." If the, that does makes not a single mainstream media news, not Fox, not MSNBC, not CNN, none of them will carry that. If that would have been a white guy standing there with the KKK going all that about it, it would have been on every news pro broadcast. If it would have been videotaped, every news broadcast would have carried it. So, are we are we able to do is improve relations? No, I, I think they're just I think they're fractured right now. Um, I think you're raised to hate. You learn it from people you hang around with. It starts to build. You're taught. I was taught that Russia was bad when I was growing up. I was taught that we were supposed to be scared. I was taught that Cuba was bad. I mean, you were taught parts of, parts of the town that you lived in were bad. Don't go there. You're, you're raised... You might not 
you might not know, but if when you're growing up, if you stuck 50 kids in a room that were two and three years old, and they were black kids, white kids, Hispanic kids, Asian kids, they would play with everyone. They would, wouldn't care. They'd play with everyone. You put 50 16-year-old kids in a room, black kids, white kids, Asian kids, Hispanic kids, and they will separate all amongst themselves. Pretty much. Not all of them, but most of them. And the reason why is because we're so... We are so taught by people to get in our own cliques. Don't let anybody take over what you you know your clique. You know you got people that, that in some parts, some cities, that think that they the blocks that they live on they own. Little gang banger, gang bangers, you want to call them. You come over there with that wrong color shirt or the wrong color handkerchief hanging out of your pocket or your hat on the wrong way, we're going to shoot you. And, I mean, some places are like that. It was like that when I was a police officer in San Antonio. There's parts of town you didn't go with the certain colors. They had two girls deaf in a car doing sign language to them at a stoplight. They were gunned down. Because they thought they were throwing gang signs. People think that, uh, you know, they think that their neighborhood, you know, they think nothing bad's going to happen to them. You know, everybody's got this mindset oh, going to live forever, and uh, nothing ever going to bad ever is going to happen to me that's bad. I'm sorry, but it happens. Before you realize it, you go, oh, crap. You know, I was, you know, when I was a kid, I think about my parents now. Well, I'm my parents now <laughs> when I was a kid. And my grandparents, it's just kind of shifted roles. And I'm like, wow. Time just flew. I didn't realize it. I mean, it's like. Where does it go? It's just so fast. Time just goes past you. Make sure you pay attention to what's going on. Don't let it pass you by. Think about your family, your friends, your closest people that you are rela or related to. And try not to do is build more enemies while you're at it. And, you know, you think, oh, what is he talking about? What's going on? I'd love to tell you. I, don't, I can't. I don't want to don't want to talk about it right at this time. Had a major, major problem. Or, well, something happening in, in my family. Very close. It's uh, not something I want to share on the radio right now. But, I mean, it's one of those where it makes you consciously think about what's going on in life. What's life, what's the true meaning of it? What's happening? We sit there and we fight over whether two guys or two girls want to marry each other or whether we, you, whether the, the word state in, in Obamacare when they were making a ruling is, is what or, you know, or... You look at, uh, you know, people that, you know, they, they, they don't call them racist, but, I mean, Farrakhan is, he says he didn't want to get rid of the Confederate flag. He says, I don't get debate over Confederate flag. We need to put down the American flag. I don't understand. If, if he doesn't want to be here, leave. If you don't like it, leave. You know, it's it's amazing 
um, how many people that live in this country that hate this country? And he he prospers off of hating this country. He's he's a leader of a religious group, and he um he has moss. He served as as minister of major moss in Boston and Harlem. But you think about that. He goes around, I guarantee he's probably driving around in one of the nicest cars you've ever seen. Got bodyguards, got the whole nine yards. He's got probably the $1,000 suit preaching about how it's everybody else's fault. Same way with your uh, your race baiter, MSNBC host, Al Sharpton. He does the same exact thing. You know, I, I just hate to see that because they, I have nothing against any person of any color, whatever. I don't care what color you are. It's your character what counts to me. If you're a jerk, well, then you're a jerk. It doesn't take, you know, you can be, it doesn't matter what color. I don't care if you're, if you're white. I, I met just as many Jerks is white, Asian, Hispanic, black, Muslim, or Arabic, or you want to call it or whatever. Of every every race there is, you have people that way. If you're a good hearted person, that's what that's what I count on. I mean, that's what I base your you on is on your character, basically on how you uh, how you are as a person. I care less what color your skin is. It means nothing. I don't care if you're polka dotted. Uh, I mean, it's just a shame that somebody thinks that because they're black, they're better than a white person, or they're white, they're better than a black person. They're not. Mike posted this thing on here, and, and what I, I like it. This is this is Mike Allen from uh, On Air with Mike Allen. It says, "It's this is." Part of the Constitution it says, We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Reiterated here in clearer language from the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all... Men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator, which is, they're talking about a God with certain unalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I got a question. Is they, They've taken church and state, and they've totally separated. They said that church and state can't be together. You know, okay. If that's the case, why does it cost more for a liquor license for a Sunday morning license to sell liquor on Sunday morning early? If you can answer that question, I'd like to know. What's the purpose of them charging more for Sunday sales if it's supposed to be the same they're not. They're supposed to be blind to faith. To make any sense, I know when I lived in El Paso, when I first lived in El Paso, I was in the service in '83. I was down there. Uh, they had a blue law, and everybody didn't know what a blue law is. Blue law was you could not in Texas. You could not buy anything that was home repair or work related. Uh, some of the stores way back down south, and Mike's sending me a messenger right there. Um, here we go. If we could, you could preserve the union by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. If we could preserve the union and free none of the slaves, I would do this also. 
Abraham Lincoln. That's what Mike just sent me. Um, but you know, if you sit there and you, you know, you're talking about down south, they had a uh, a blue law, and Mike would probably I don't know. Yeah, Mike would be old enough; he'd remember. Is in a blue law, you couldn't go and you couldn't go into a hardware store. They were closed. Um, I was talking to uh, one of the guys who works for me. He's a retired Walgreens manager. Did 39 years at Walgreens. Uh, he does part time just to you know to work, you know, find something to do, keep him busy. He's retired, and he told me that uh, when he was he lived in he's from Louisiana that the stores were closed on Sundays. He didn't even have a store open. Well, I remember that because we were in Alabama in 80. Oh, it was 80. would have been either the fall of 82 or the spring of 83. Uh, they let give us a pass. We went to town, and all the stores were closed on Sunday. So, yeah, it was very common that they, and they were closed in order for people to go to service. Well, the law to allow liquor sales on Sunday morning was put in effect for if you wanted to sell liquor, like at the golf course or whatever, you had to pay extra for that license. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I'd have to look it up. But I know that it's they pay extra for Sunday morning sales. And I'm like, why should they have to pay extra if – the government is supposed to be blind to faith. You don't get off on if if you work for the you know whatever state it is, you don't get off for Christmas. You get off for winter break or whatever it is. You don't get off or they call it a like the 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 kids in public school, they don't get off for Christmas break. They get off for winter break or semester break, or whatever they call it. Uh, Easter, they don't get off for Easter. I know it's this Easter Sunday, but generally, or let's say, um, oh, it would be another day that would uh, would be a religious holiday. Um, oh, crap, I can't think of anything right off the top of my head, but uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, you know, they, they uh, you can say Happy Thanksgiving, but you don't say... Uh, you don't say uh, Merry Christmas. It's Happy Holidays, which I think is much crap. He might just post it. He goes, that's because it's a local law, not federal law. Well, correct. But a local law, they can't... Um, supposedly, you're not supposed to be able to do is enact anything uh, stricter. If the feds don't require it, I mean, I don't know how they could get away with saying that you'd have to pay more for a Sunday sales. They're supposed to be just as required, just the same, that they're blind to faith. So I don't know. I'll have to look that one up. I just was kind of shocked when I saw the renewal notice for our liquor license and I and I we looked up the the code for it because we we were trying to find out um, what we just took back our concessions this year we had them farmed out to another company so we we took it back and our liquor license that we the city obtained it stated it's got you know it's got numbers and and whatever letters and whatever blah 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 and we looked it up I looked it up online with the the liquor board, and it said that they, the class that we had was, um, it included Sunday morning liquor sales. Oh, it's in the Bill of Rights that we have uh, Sunday morning liquor sales. <laughs> Amendment 10. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I thought that was, but wouldn't that have been uh, what happened with the Al Capone and prohibition and all that, huh? If it was in Amendment Ten. <laughs> but no, I'm. I'm just. I'm gonna do a little more research on that and find out. I mean, I. 
I'd hate to be the one to start a ball rolling where they say, oh, hell, we can't charge those now. <laughs> and that'd be a lot for the state to to not recoup. Um, which, hell, they're always giving, you know, it would help out a lot of businesses if they didn't have to pay a higher liquor license, that's for sure. In, uh, but no, talking about getting back to What we originally started talking about, but you know, Farrakhan and, and and now the problem is is what they've done is they've taken these you know they they pulled the Confederate flag off the Capitol, all right, and they said they won't sell it at Walmart and all these, but all these other little smaller businesses that still sell it are selling thirty and fifty of them a day. It's it's snowballing their business into selling these things. Um, no, I don't, don't plan on selling them, no. But it's, uh, the the thing I have, a, I don't have any problem with the, if Walmart doesn't want to sell them, I don't care. If eBay doesn't want to sell it, fine, whatever. But when you stop selling Confederate flags because you're afraid of the outrage, but you still sell Nazi swat, swastikas, Something's wrong. So, I mean, I, I just think that they need to do is, uh, if they're going to be proactive, what's the difference? When do we start banning books? Or, or burning books, I'm sorry. I guarantee you, if you had a Bible and a Koran right there, and they went to burn both the books... The outrage would be so great about burning the Koran if it was publicized, and nobody would care less about the Bible being burned. You know, it's just, it's, um, yes, Mike, not specific to liquor, just states may enact laws specific to their areas. Correct. I understand that. What I'm talking about is if they're basing it on a religious reason why Sunday morning would be liquor sales they can't base it upon religious reasons because you can't use a religious reading reason as a charge for to charge extra because of the it being a state which is supposed to be blind to religious um, yeah they can act laws Speaking of enacting laws, I was re-watching this one, and they are talking about, and I mean, it's crazy. You think about some of the goofy things that they, they plan on doing is, but they're talking about fining you in Jacksonville, Florida, for people who park their cars in their driveway back when they back them into the driveway, unless their license plate information is clearly visible from the street. So if you back your car into the driveway and you pull another car in behind it, they're going to do is ticket you. I know they understand they're trying to do is cut down on cars that are, uh, you know, they call it visual blight, where people, you know, get work on their their cars and they leave them sitting on their property. Well, the problem is it's going to be one more. I, I, I just... It's just a revenue generator. It's just a way. It's 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 um, what do you want to call? It's uh, I wouldn't call it a. It's more or less where the officer opinion or whatever he you know it's based on his opinion whether he wants to write that ticket or not. So I. If it becomes a law, well, then he's going to have to write that ticket. The problem is you might be backed in. Somebody else can't see your license plate because the other car is blocking it. And you just might have three cars and they all pull out. As long as they move each day and move within every couple of days, then it should be fine. You know, you shouldn't see any problem with that. If they, uh, if that's the, if they feel that that's a problem, that they're working on, they need. They got to start looking at other problems. 
you know, a lot of people don't realize, and Mike, Mike would understand, Mike Allen would understand it. In some of the lower income areas, they park cars in front of their house for a reason. Because the reason is the engine block protects the house from drive-by shootings. And people go, oh, that's, I don't do that. That's not true. Bull crap. I've been to, D, we call them DRTs, dead right there. I've been to shootings with hits. I work with the gang unit. I've seen it. People go up to people's house and just light them up. And you don't think it happens? Well, you live in a neighborhood where it doesn't happen. Um, and hopefully it do, never does happen to you. But I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people that do live in those neighborhoods. You go down in San Antonio, they call it the Glen. And uh, over on the east side, rough neighborhood. It's a uh, lot of shootings going on. Yeah, you people parking cars right in their yards, right blocking their houses because they, they don't want a stray bullet coming through. I mean, you know, and you think about that. Your house walls aren't very, very thick. That bullet's going to go through. So, well... It's time for another break. Uh, we'll take a quick break once again. This is Matt Hazel, your host of Straight Talk. And you're listening to Armed Radio Global. Global presents its new 2015 Talk at Night lineup. Mondays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Spot on with Lino and Tom. Straight Talk with Matt Hazley. Mondays and Fridays, 10 p.m. Eastern. On Tuesdays, Talk Sign with Val, 8 p.m. Eastern. Followed by High Five at 10 p.m. Eastern with Johnny and Mikey. Wednesdays on the air with Mike Allen, 10 p.m. EST. And Thursdays, Night Talk with Joe Rocks, 10 p.m. Eastern. Join the talk now on Ustream TV. TV. Replays on Spreaker, exclusively on Armed Radio Global. You're listening to Armed Radio Global. No boring playlists here. Playing the hits and the ones you missed from the 70s, 80s and 90s with a few surprises and our new Talk at Night shows. So join the talk at 1-866-225-5401 or Twitter us now on Ustream TV Armed Radio Global. Is your wife wicked hot or is she just cold? Do you just want to take a hot shower? Call Savino Mechanical for all your heating, hot water, and cooling needs. Savino Mechanical has been servicing greater Boston and southern New Hampshire for over a quarter century. Quality 24-hour service, reasonable rates, satisfaction guaranteed, licensed and insured. And remember, at Savino Mechanical, we are not comfortable until you are. Call Savino Mechanical today at 1-855-624-4280. That's 1-855-624-4280. Savino Mechanical. Attention world of tank gamers. Armed and its affiliated divisions are recruiting entire clans and tankers. Armed, the largest and most progressive gaming community on the world of tanks gaming platform. Now on three servers. To join, visit www.armstank.net or hashtag me to toaster. Toast that, bitches. back on straight talk and speaking of the pleasure principle um kind of takes us into the next story here um apparently monica Lewinsky gets a standing ovation at cans um she says i was patient zero of cyberbullying bull crap it says, speaking of the some of the most creative advertising people in the world, Monica Lewinsky received a standing ovation after she recounted how she was treated 
after her infamous scandal with former President Bill Clinton and saying public shaming is a blood sport must stop. Well, don't suck the Peter and you don't get called out. You, you know, what did you expect? All right, think about it. You frickin' played the skin flute on the frickin' president. He lied his ass off, got caught in a lie. He ended up getting impeached because of the lie. You know, didn't kick him out of office, of course, but he stayed in. But he gets impeached because he lied to the, to, the American public. She saved the frickin' dress for a reason. If you didn't, you took it down to the frickin', you know, uh, Sandy, Sandy shop, whatever, and get it dry clean, get the frickin' jizz taken out of it. But no, she saved it for a reason because she wanted it as leverage because she thought, I'll use it as leverage down the road and write me a frickin' book. Or now she's... These idiots, they tout her as, oh, now she was cyber bullied. Oh my God, she had it so rough. She's a freaking tramp. She was screwing the freaking president or uh, sucking on it. I bet she did more than what she, what is let on. I'm sorry. And they, they don't, she was the freaking one that was whoring around with the president. But they're now they're saying, oh, it wasn't her fault. <laughs> no, it wasn't her fault. Well, <laughs> apparently the president um, wasn't holding her head there. Uh, it just, I don't, I don't know. I just, it just, maybe was she, uh, did she respond to a Craigslist ad or something? <laughs> CIM or whatever you want to call it is on Joe Rock Show. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Apparently, she didn't do very well at that because it was all over her dress. But um, uh, she told the crowd, like me at 22, you may have taken wrong turns and fallen in love with the wrong person, maybe even your boss. Unlike me, though, your boss probably wasn't the President of the United States. <sighs> Give me a break. The President fell in love with your lips. That's all he wanted. So... Yeah, she, uh, what I don't understand is how you can take a woman that was tramping around on the president, or with the president, on the president's, the first lady, Hillary Clinton, whether you like her or not, and now they give her a standing ovation. Like she should be revered as somebody that's, you know, that's something special. I'm sorry. You, nobody's responsible for what they do. The drunk driver is not responsible. Yes, he is. The drunk driver pays out the ass if they've been drinking. It's not the freaking can of beer. But I'll tell you what. This freaking nut job and shot the people down in South Carolina. Oh, it's not his fault. It's the gun. No, it's not the gun. This guy would have found another way. If he, if he was going out running people over or, or killing people, he's going to find another way. It doesn't have to be a gun. Look at the Oklahoma City bombing. He didn't use a gun. Killed a bunch of people. I mean, everybody wants to ban the gun. They think it's the gun's fault. Gun does nothing. Gun sits there by itself. The person has to pick it up and use it. I guarantee you, if this guy's that nuts, he would have done it with a knife or gone in with a freaking samurai sword or something. He would have done something. The thing I have questions about the kid that went in to and shot his name, I guess, is is. Um, not hood, it's uh, roof or something like that, R-O-O-F. There's a discrepancy about how old he is. They say he's 21. Um, there's stories going around that he's actually 33 and he's a U.S. Marine fighter pilot. He said he's 
unemployed. But he, uh, there's story going around that he's been um, what they would call a crisis actor. I'm uh, one of the guys I've had him on the show before, Dr. James Fetzer. He talks about the JFK shooting and everything. I've had, he, he wrote an article about this guy. They show the photos that you're seeing on main, MSM, Main Street Media. They show the photos with these patches on his jacket, two of them, which are supposed to be white supremacist patches. They show the other photo side by side, exact same photo. Somebody has photoshopped the white supremacy patches on his jacket. Not saying that this guy's a, uh, a world class citizen or not, you know, I mean, but somebody's adding to make this look worse than it is. They're trying to build his manifesto into, um, you know, it, it, you know, you think about it. Oh, it's um, they will have him painted as a, a a racist and everything. Well, I, I mean, apparently it would be uh, if you go by what what they're saying, but they will have tick 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 everything he's done in succession and make it look like that. I just got a Facebook post. Let me see here. George, you wrote a gigantic poster. <laughs> oh, it says, we must reject the idea that every time a law is broken, society is guilty rather than the lawbreaker. It's time to restore the American precept that each individual is accountable for his action. Ronald Reagan. That's a great quote. You know, you sit there and you see too many people in the, in society nowadays where they automatically blame it. It's society what caused him to do this. I, I mean, there's if somebody does something nowadays, oh, they didn't really mean it. Oh, they were they were somebody pushed them and or that that oh the priest fondled them or or. You know, I mean, they automatically turn it into somebody else did that to them to cause them to push them to that edge. It's gotten to be where whatever we do throughout our day, they're constantly bombarding us, telling us that it's not your fault. It's it's government's fault, or your or it's this rich guy's fault over here, or whatever. If if everything is, you look at the the states, uh, or you look at New York, and you look at uh, you know different states like that that have been under democratic um, control, as you want to call it, or Democratic Party. If it's been so great, I'm not I'm not saying that the Republicans going to be better, but it, I'm just saying is if it's been so great. How come they haven't brought the people up out of poverty that they, the people that are in poverty think that they should? The one statement that I heard that made more sense than anything is every subsidy that you get from, some, from the government is taken from somebody else. The government doesn't build, they don't make anything, they don't build anything. They don't manufacture anything like that. They don't make money. They don't sell it. They don't make money off it. So everything that the government gives to somebody else as a subsidy has been taken from somebody else. Everybody goes, well, they should be able to charge $20 an hour or give 20 bucks an hour to employees at, at McDonald's because McDonald's can afford it. Well, they probably can, but they're there to make money. They didn't start McDonald's business to break even. It was not a non-profit organization. I'm sorry, but people don't understand that. It's hard to hard to understand that for a business. People d don't realize that that business is there to make money. You know, it's not there to break even. 
Uh, some businesses are, but you know, majority of them are there to try to make money. And if they don't make money, they go under. And if they go under, there's no job. So, I mean, poorly run businesses go under. It's, uh, you know, and, and so many people think that, oh, they, you know, you run a business, you make a ton of money, you're rich. No, I'm sorry. I run a very small business and <laughs> it's, I don't make near what, I don't make anything near what they, what they think I make. You know, everybody thinks that, you know, oh, because you run a business, you're rich. No, it's not. No, not at all. But, you know, you see people that own McDonald's and they're doing well. And but they think that they should be able to do is, well, they should be able to do is double their salary and pay everybody 20 bucks an hour. Well, it's not going to. I just don't see it happening. If they do, they're going to charge more for the burger. They have to offset their costs, you know. People don't realize that if you got a thousand employees and those thousand employees make uh, whatever it is, whatever amount of, and you give them a dollar a raise and they work 40 hours a week and just say they work 50 weeks a year. That's what? 2000 hours or whatever it is. So if they work 40 hours a week times 50 weeks, it's 2,000 hours. So if you got 1,000 employees and you just gave them a dollar an hour raise, so you gave them $2,000 increase, just, just as a dollar, all right? And you got 1,000 employees. So just think how much money that equates to when you pay each person a thousand employees that much. I mean, that people don't realize that they think, Oh, and I've had people, they respond to me as, um, well, I'm only worried about myself. Well, yeah. So is the other guy. He's worried about himself. And this guy's worried about himself and everybody's worried about themselves. And the guy that runs the business worried about himself. So, I mean, what, what's going to be a livable wage? If, if it's like, you know, if if they give the guy at McDonald's twenty dollars an hour, or if they raise minimum wage to twenty dollars an hour, everything is going to go up in relationship to that that raise of costs. Where do, where does it stop? Where do where do you where does it level out at? I mean, so what if you're spending a dollar for something, or if you're spending ten dollars for something? If it's in relationship to what everybody gets paid. How does that change? It doesn't change anything. It just makes it look like you make more, but you don't. Because uh, everybody else is going to charge more for everything. When I was a kid, you, we were talking about today. If you went out and bought bubble gum, well, it was Bazooka Joe gum. You bought two for a penny. Nowadays, I don't think you can buy one of those for probably a quarter. You know, I don't I don't know what it is. I haven't bought Bazooka, Bazooka Joe forever. But, I mean... That that was what it was. It was it, you bought two for a penny, and I mean you could have so much candy you didn't know what to do with if you had fifty cents, you know. And it was rare that you ever had fifty cents of it. <laughs> my my dad made the comment. I used to have a fishbowl with a bunch of change in it, and I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't there. I plead the fifth. It wasn't had nothing to do with me. <laughs> and he just started laughing. He goes, Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> He goes, yeah, your your brother, <laughs> yeah. I said, yeah, it was all his fault, and I'm not. Uh... Hopefully, that's uh, not tonight. Oh, good. That wasn't. It was an old post from George. I saw the one on on uh, Skype. Uh, <laughs> good, but no. So. Um, no, but you you think about how everything is changing in relationship with each other. If you make ten dollars an hour and they charge a dollar for the cheeseburger, now if you make twenty dollars an hour, they're gonna charge four dollars for the cheeseburger. You know? 
it's going to happen. It's not going to sit there and be to where they're they're going to they're going to recoup their costs. Everything is going to go up. Their their fry oil is going to go up. Their you know their French fries are going to go up. Everything that they do is going to go up in costs. If um, the way you get people to spend more money is to lower their taxes, and they go, oh, that's not true. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but yes, it is. Because if you want people to spend money, you have to do is let them have more money by cutting back their taxes. You cut back their taxes, they have more money to spend. What's the biggest ad that you hear every April, right around the 15th or whatever of April, is for cars. Oh, use your tax rebate to buy your your down payment. We'll use your tax rebate to buy your furniture. We'll use your tax rebate, whatever. If you get money back, most people are spending it because you know why they think? I didn't plan on having it. It's like a windfall check. I didn't plan on, get, plan on getting it back. They do. They spend it all the time. They go in. I mean, it's very common. So they think it's, oh, it's found money. Let's go spend it. So they go use it on something. So, I mean, it's... If you give it back to them, lower taxes and give it back to them, you're going to have people that are go, they're going to go out and spend it. Which it's going to do is when they go out and spend it, it's going to create more tax revenue for the states and federal government. It's it's a proven fact. So, can we get to there where people understand it? No, the hell no. They're too busy wanting to do is tell everybody that it's this rich guy's fault that they're poor. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, Hillary Clinton. She's just as rich as them trying to tell you that she's poor. How how you sit there and, and jump on her bandwagon to tell her that she uh, she's telling you that she's poor and has no money. Well, speaking of Hillary Clinton, and I'm, I don't have a lot of time left, but I wanted to do is talk about uh, apparently they're missing like 15 emails from Hillary, Hillary Clinton's uh, work-related emails from uh, her private server. It says uh, that were released this week by a House panel investigating 2012 attack in Benghazi. Uh, the emails all predate the September 11th assault. It says on the U.S. diplomatic facility and included scant words written by Clinton herself, the official said. They consist of more than a series of would-be intelligence reports passed to her by longtime political confidant Sidney Blumenthal. All right. But the, the one thing about it is is Trey Gowdy says, Chairman of the Select Committee on Benghazi. I would not want him on me. Oh, my God. He is... When he is on somebody for... When they have to go up and, and testify in front of him, he is nasty. <laughs> he knows what to ask and how to ask it. But it says, Rep. Trey Gowdy, Chairman of the Select Committee on Benghazi, released a statement Thursday saying... This confirms doubts about the completeness of Clinton's self-selected public records and raised serious questions about her decision to erase her personal service, especially before it can be analyzed by an independent, neutral third party. How can, you know, I'm sorry, but I don't know how you can elect her. If you elect her, you are going to get the most... Um, you know, everybody thinks that you know they. President Obama said that he was going to be the most transparent, and hasn't been. But you think that if you think President Obama hasn't been was hiding stuff, well, she's going to be even worse. So I mean, she she's already proved it. If um, they got to they get, they have to find somebody else. 
that can handle her job or handle the presidency besides her because I, I just don't trust her. I mean, there's Republicans that don't, I don't trust and I don't like, uh, but her as a Democrat, I don't trust her at all. When, when you get people that sit there and they go with a false narrative for five days or seven days or whatever it is, you, you know it's you know it's not true. Why keep spouting it off? You got to update it. Well, they didn't. They all sat there and you know tr tried to uh, you know tried to keep going with the same status quo and never change. You know never adapting the the you know the narrative and she flat lied she just lied if they would have came out straight from the get-go and said we screwed up we should have sent somebody over there nobody would have it would have been a done story in two days people would have been pissed that he should yes yeah we should have went over there we screwed up no they hid hid it because they didn't want to make it look like it was nothing because they wanted to do is make sure he got reelected so they hit it, hit the story, and now it just keeps hanging around and hanging around. Well, nobody wants to sit there and you know people just deny that it's that it's the truth or anything like that. Um, what are we going to realize that our government might not be in our best interest? <laughs> you know, they think they they think they are. Maybe they're in their own best interests. Well, switching gears there, um, kind of a kind of a wild note there. They had this. I don't know how you pronounce the actual. It says Hadrian or whatever. The robot bricklayer can build a whole house in two days. It says robot can be put to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, building houses. It says an Australian engineer has built a robot that can build houses in two hours. It could work every day to build houses for people. Human housebuilders have to work for four to six weeks to put a house together. They have to take uh, weekends and holidays off. The robot can work much more quickly and doesn't need to take breaks. It says it's spelled H A D R I N, Hadrian or whatever, could take the jobs of human bricklayers, but its creator Mark Pivik uh, told Perth Now that it was just a response to the lack of available workers. The average age of industry is getting much higher, and the robot might be able to fill some of the gaps. Can he make me a shower? <laughs> It says, people have been laying bricks for over 6,000 years, and ever since the industri Industrial Revolution, they have tried to automate the bricklaying process. Uh, Pivik told Perth Now, which is first reported in his creation, but despite thousands of years house building, most bricklaying is still done by hand. Hadrian works by laying 1,000 bricks an hour, uh, letting it put up 150 houses a year. It takes the design of the house, then works out where the bricks need to go before cutting and laying each of them in a 28-foot arm, which used to set uh, set the mortar in brick. It means that it doesn't need to move during the laying. Uh, Pivik will now work to communicate, uh, commercialize the robot first in the West, West Australia, but eventually globally. That would be impressive. To see uh, a robot build a brick house, you know, I mean, just think of the buildings that it could be achieved. And I guarantee you, the unions in the United States are going to go crazy, pissed off. You'll probably see them try to sabotage the stupid thing. I mean, it, it, you know, I looked at some, you know, some of the buildings, old buildings, are in such solid buildings where nowadays you see these buildings that are built they crumble and fall apart they crack foundations everything uh, we got a 
a building up at the golf course that the brickwork on that hasn't cracked. And it was built in the 60s. You know, some of these older buildings that are built way back in 1900s, they're in just, you know, solid, solid brick buildings. And nobody builds anything with brick anymore. But if a robot could do the work, that'd be a lot, make it a lot cheaper to, to, uh, to erect a brick building. I'd like to do is have him do is maybe uh, teach the robot to, instead of uh, making your house where they put siding on, make it to where the house, uh, they can actually brick your the house exterior to where it would take place of the siding. That'd be kind of cool. So, well, it's time to call it a night. We, uh, Oh, let's see if we got anything else going on before. Oh, by the way, um, apparently Univision has decided to drop the Miss USA pageant thanks to comments Donald Trump made. Uh, but apparently Donald Trump uh, GOP presidential bid quickly led to business fallout for him, but Univision saying it will drop the Miss USA pageant because uh, the company said Thursday is canceling Spanish language coverage of the pan uh, pageant July 12th. It also has a severed business relationship with Miss Universe organization, which produces the Miss USA pageant because it's what called insulting remarks about Mexican immigrants by Trump as a part owner of Miss Universe. Um, well, Trump made the misstatement that uh, a lot of the people or immigrants that are coming over here are criminals and different stuff like that. Well, he said, they don't want me to saying Mexico is killing the United States in trade and killing United States at the border, Trump said. Univision is totally laying down for the Mexican government. They want to silence Donald Trump and Donald Trump can't be silenced. I gave great respect for Mexico and I love Mexican people. But loyalty is, my loyalty is the United States, he said. So he was blasted. A lot of the immigrants that have been coming over here, that we, uh, and, and a lot of them have been getting in criminal, um, getting arrested, and they're releasing them back into the public when they shouldn't be released. So Trump has stood up, said what he felt about it, and Univision is backing out and said they're not going to air the US, uh, Miss USA pageant, but he's going to sue them because he has a contract with them. So we'll see how far it goes. It'll be interesting to listen to him. But when I, one thing I do like about Donald Trump, which a lot of the candidates don't do, he's not afraid to say something that pisses people off. And that's what we got to get to. We got to get to where the hard questions need to be asked. And whether it offends somebody, sometimes we need to ask those questions. Both sides. Both. We should have be, be able to question our government. And that's part of the, part of the Constitution. We're, we're allowed to question our government's methods and, and, and what they plan on doing. That's what we're supposed to do. So that's why the United States is so great. Well, everybody have a great night, a great weekend, and most of all, I'm gonna switch my computers here. Uh, be safe. <laughs>